One, four, 17. This was the Wasp Massacre of 2017. Good morning, everybody. Back from Orlando, back from Disney. Today is Q&A Tuesday on Friday, but comes out on Saturday. I'll go through all the questions that I've had since yesterday's video until the last Q&A video, and I try to answer them as best as I can. First question is by Calling98. Was that a robot dinosaur, or was there a person in a suit when you guys were taking pictures. I honestly don't know. I think it was a robot, uh, a robot controlled by a person because it did have movements dependent on where the people were located, but it could have just been programmed a certain way with sensors. I really don't know. It could have been robotic. It could have been a person in there controlling robots or it could have been completely automated. But according to the people at Universal, it was a real Velociraptor that was nine years old. It was pretty terrifying. Uh, especially for <laughs> Freeware sucks asked if when I was in Japan did I go any did I go to any of the developer the developers over there like Nintendo Capcom PlayStation I did not I wasn't really on a tourist I didn't really have a tourist itinerary of like things to do. It was more of uh, immersion in the culture and riding our bicycles around aimlessly. We loosely followed the japancycling.org route uh, until we got close to Osaka again and then we flew back to Bangkok and then we flew to Bangkok. I'm going to go to Japan again one day and I will try to make it to the developer things. The developer things and maybe some like automotive museums. Master Chief 88 asked, your brother has his own baseball card. Yes, he does. He has his own coaching card now. I think he has like 10 or 15 when he was actually playing through the different teams. Uh, as you saw in the video, he's got a stack of the coaching cards and I think my Aunt Linda and my grandma collects them. Other than that, Carlos Benjamin asked, private jet? Cause I was talking, I was joking. I was like, oh, have fun on the private jet when Amy's family was leaving. I was joking with them. Her, her stepdad's a surgeon. So I joked with him about having a private jet. He was like, yeah, I wish. And if uh, one day he gets a private jet, I think that'll be a great vlog. It was just a joke. Nobody owns a private jet. Deb's treasure says, okay, Eric, this is in regards to my student loan payment video. So that Keurig was pure profit. Everything else you sold costs. Do you repay yourself from those funds? How do you keep buying more items? And I wasn't really clear as I should have been, I think in my debt payoff videos, and I really don't go over it on every video. I think I might've gone over it in one video briefly, or maybe I didn't communicate it clear enough, but I'm selling a lot of personal items that I have had over the years, such as my video game, uh, primarily my video game collection, some clothes that were my size or that were mine. Um, that I have maybe thrifted over the years. The way that I am paying this debt is I am going all out, throwing everything, including what I initially had in the item at the debt because the $5 or the $3 that it cost me for that item. So if I have $5 into a jacket or into a pair of pants or into, so those two, three, five, ten dollars $10, whatever I have into the items, it's not large enough to make an impact on my cash flow right now. I really don't need that $10 back. So once I get that $10, from selling the item. For instance, this DVD VCR recorder, if I paid $10 for it, I don't get that $10 back until the item sells. And I don't buy enough inventory to where my business account is hurting. I have savings for gas, for food, for living expenses, for fun, like I just spent some time in Orlando. Once those accounts get below a certain threshold, I will be pulling from sales to build those accounts back up to save and to build those accounts back up. Hopefully that makes sense and answers your question. If you have any more questions about that, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer them as best as possible. But hopefully that makes sense. I tried using the analogy of like, you found $20 in a, jean, a pair of jeans you haven't worn in a while. And it's just like, you weren't hurting for that 20, but you found it and you're like, oh, what should I use this 20 for? I'm gonna use it for whatever you need to use it at that time to go to dinner, to pay the loan, buy some gas. It's just like you found money. You didn't have it before. You didn't need it, you didn't have it before, but when you found it, you wanted to use it for a specific purpose. Feel free if you want me to elaborate on something else, but I hope that answers your question. Good question, Deb's Treasure. And I think Dan Mack had a similar question. I hope that answered your question as well. I tried to get into the comments before and answer it, but if not, here is another answer for everyone else that's watching. I'm sure I'm gonna get this question like 10 or 15 more times as the loans get more and more paid off. It's a gazelle intense way of paying it off. I have saved money for living expenses and plan for it. And that's where I get to throw everything at the loans. I hope my rambling made sense. Let me know. Suresh K says, you use rewards credit cards when you're thrifting. I 
did in the past. I'm not doing it this year. It's actually a pretty, it's actually a pretty heated argument between Rachel and I, apparently. I'm using either my debit card or PayPal for all of my purchases. So that is cash, that is straight up cash. No, um, no credit card. And I'm doing that for 12 months just to see. The records of Wells Fargo debit cards are easier to pull transactions from that are more than three months old for record keeping. For Chase, if you're not on top of pulling your three month records, your Excel documents, you only are able to look at PDFs, which can kind of be a pain. So it's just something I'm experimenting with and I might go back to credit card rewards or I might just keep it debit card. I don't know. But at Dave Ramsey's defense of him not being on the points train is the psychological aspect of spending. Whenever you ask a millionaire how they got there, none of them say they got there from credit card points. Companies like to use marketing coupons, points to tap into our psyche and I'm trying to purge from that for at least 12 months. That's a good question, Suresh. I hope that answers your question. A big D reseller says, I really hate to be this guy. We only see what you show on video, but how does a 29 year old, he puts man in quotations. When you put things in quotations, it means maybe you are, maybe you're not, I don't know. With a college degree that does not have a place of his own and it seems to live with his parents. I think that's the question. How do I not have a place of my own? I think that's the question. So I'm gonna answer that. I don't have a place of my own at this moment in time. I have a van. I have a fiance in Dubai where I could go to that apartment. Maybe I haven't explained or showed this well enough in the past 186 videos, but I was in Japan for two months this year I was in Thailand for four months this year. I have been in the United States for four months this year. To pay rent or to pay a mortgage would be a complete waste of money. I don't have enough things, I don't have enough furniture to justify purchasing a house, but if having a house or a place to stay makes me a man, then I am still then I'm still a boy. Everyone I've spoken to about purchasing real estate as an investment or as a place to live has said the market is high. Wait for it to crash again. So I'm going to be stacking my money to purchase when it crashes to get in at a certain point. And I don't live with my parents. I stay with my mom when I'm in Florida. I'm usually not in Florida for more than a couple months out of the year. Last year I was here maybe one or two months I spent a lot of time in New Mexico in my own apartment that I paid rent for, uh, something like six or seven months while I was working. I was on a bike tour last year for two or three months. Having a house would be an awful investment for my life right now. He also says, I have heard in the resale circles that you are a bit of a freeloader. Please prove those rumors wrong. What do I need to show you to prove the rumors wrong? I'm not on welfare. I'm not on food stamps. I have bought my mom a car in cash. I've offered to pay rent. Once I make enough money, we're gonna get this house paid off as well. Define freeloading and I will try to answer the question better. I Like I said in the comments, please send these people virtual slap emojis. Rumors are just gossip. Gossip does not build your business. Gossip does not put money in your pocket. Gossip does not put you in a good focused mental state. Freestyle Finds asks, any idea when YouTube pays for your monetized video? Is it quarterly or monthly? YouTube pays out monthly if you hit your threshold above $100. Uh, as you saw in my previous student loan update video, I've recently got my first payout from YouTube, which went to towards the student loans, which I appreciate everyone out there who watches the videos and allows that small, tiny, microscopic trickle of ad revenue to come in. But it does help. If I could get the ad revenue up to $300 a month, that would about pay for my interests if I just let the loans stay there. Uh, but we're going after principal, so that's not the way it's gonna work. A Patriot also asks, good for me, but you, but don't you need a few dollars to buy inventory, gas, or food? I tried to answer that in a previous blabbing about five minutes ago. Hopefully that answers your question. Thrifty Trucker says, did you have to have a website in order to get Google AdSense on your YouTube channel? I really don't know. I applied for it years ago, and I don't know if it has changed since then. I just didn't have it set up correctly to where I was getting Google AdSense or I wasn't monetizing my videos correctly, but I did have it linked. I just wasn't making any money off of them. Antique Queen asked if my mom's a teacher. No, she's not. She works at a private school. She works in the, the, um, the kitchen and in daycare. So she's not a teacher in the uh, academic sense, but she has taught me and my brother's things throughout our lives. Christy Rommel asked if Aqua Zumba counts as exercise. Absolutely, Aqua Zumba counts as exercise. Getting up and walking around the block counts as exercise. Wiggling around in a chair. 
Anything that is using up ATP in your body, which is adenine triphosphate, it's like the energy molecule of the human body. Any sort of movement is exercise. It's burning up ATP, it's burning up calories. So absolutely 100% Aqua Zumba counts. Eduardo Murillo asks, do you ever think about changing your name from the college picker to something else after you graduated? Great question, but absolutely not. I have graduated from the College of Pharmacy, from the College of Orderly Education, standard academia, whatever you wanna call it. Now I'm in the College of Life for the rest of my life. I'm always learning. My favorite habit of the seven habits is sharpening the saw, which is learning. So nah, we're never gonna change the name, I'm sorry. Waxing Prophetic asked if I were sending in a DVD player to FBA, would I have packed it up the same way, printed barcode on the outside. You can box them up and put the barcode on the outside. You can bubble wrap them, put, them, put the barcode on the outside. You can stretch wrap them put the barcode on the outside. You just wanna make sure you pack the box well enough to where they're not going to get thrown around and broken. If you've ever seen how a DVD player or a uh, VCR is shipped from a factory, it is in a lot of foam and it is suspended in the box. It is really well packaged because there are some, I, I guess there's some fragile electronic components in there and you want to reduce the chances of it breaking in shipping. So there's a couple ways you can do it. I hope that helps and answers your question. John Abercrombie asks, this probably was answered in another video, but how do you ship your tennis rackets? I did answer it in another video. I have a video called four ways to ship a tennis racket. I'll put a link to it in the corner. And in that video, I show four different ways. And I use the last method right now, which is basically just bubble wrapping the tennis racket it, putting it into a large poly bag and shipping it first class. That's if the racket doesn't have a case. If it has a case, I'll put it in the case, then put it in the bag, and then try to ship it first class. That is the, uh, the method that I currently use because it is easy. It's easy, I don't use a box. Flawlessly gotten the product there many, many times. Wes M asks, how does it feel to bike long distance? Do you listen to music? Are you just thinking about the whole time? Does your butt hurt after a while? Not a dumb question, dude, that is a great question. Yes, your butt hurts, but it will get better. Cycling shorts can help. Having a good saddle can help. Riding position and bike fit can help. The way your handlebars are set up can help. There's a lot of things that can help the butt hurt. Sometimes I listen to music. Sometimes I pray. Sometimes I think. Sometimes I just ride. I've had some pretty incredible thoughts that I've never had until I was on the bike thinking. For instance, does a scale exist in the world that can measure the difference between a fully charged phone or a completely depleted phone of charge? Because electrons do have a weight and when a phone has a full charge, it should technically weigh more than an empty phone. I was actually thinking about that on a bike tour because I was like, we're charging all of our electronics but it's actually making them way heavier. I'm just curious if there's a scale somewhere in the world that can measure that uh, difference in weight. Th weird things like that I'll think about on a bike. Dude, not a dumb question at all, great question. D.O. asks, when is Rachel coming back and does she ever make an appearance on my vlog? She was in some of the Thailand videos. She doesn't particularly enjoy being on camera. Hopefully that will get better in the future. I'm not sure when she's coming back. I'll probably, I will definitely be going over there before she comes back. So look forward to coming with me to Dubai one day, hopefully. Like any job, nothing is always secure. Sometimes your cheese gets moved and you have to adapt. But uh, I hope to get over there before she has to move. I hope that's, I think that's everyone's questions. If you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We're gonna get, a, get into what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the day. This is going to be one of those long Q&A vlogs. I apologize. Sold two things today. And I can print my labels wirelessly from my brother printer that I picked up last week. This thing's sweet. Some of the best $30 I've spent in a long time. $15 to ship FedEx Smart Post, not bad. I'm gonna swing by the post office and then check the P.O. box. I think I have my P.O. box key. Yeah, I got my P.O. box key with me. Seems to be that. My P.O. box is full of stuff. Is she gonna stay with you? make it here the barcode is this barcode is like super duper like unable to read thank you everyone who sent a package that's awesome lots of packages from a lot of different people i'll have to do a uh, package opening with andy i think i'll save them all until i get because some of them are for andy some of them are for me we'll have to do an unboxing next time andy's down here i'll be saving them until then we got escalade we got twins we got more family look what all my subscribers sent me wow that's cool
Half of them Andy are. Loved half of them are for Andy. Nah. -uh. Yeah. Hey, we got twins. Uh, Say hi, Uncle Eric. It is P I S S I N G. Yeah. You want to go out swimming? Your subs up there. Sweet. Say hi, Uncle Eric. Got my CV axle, I think, right here. There's a CV axle. Oh, it got my nut on it too. Good. So this one doesn't have a clip on it. That's interesting. Is that? Hi. That must mean that the clip goes in here. Oh, mom's home. There's grandbabies here. Just came home to bring some there's grandbabies here that need kissing. I know. Well, they're screaming. They're screaming. So, well, they know you're here. Oh, you got two. Two. Hi, Grandma. You come to save me? <laughs> <laughs> Lowell Spinners, look at you and your cute pink shirt. Oh, I miss you guys. Oh, you're toasty warm. It's nice out, huh? You've been swimming a long time? We're going to the pool. We're going to the pool. We're going to the pool. <laughs> so this is what a pygmy rattlesnake actually looks like. Yeah, Fat body. It looks like it. And it's got that uh, diamond shaped head. Hurricane season is pretty much over. So we're taking down the shutters for my mom. Ooh, that could have been a toe. I know. Nate was telling me that he knows somebody that he was working with that sliced his leg up on these shutter edges and it went all the way through to a tendon. He had trouble walking, so these are pretty, pretty dangerous. We got one wasp nest right here that's gonna get attacked. One might live inside of this shutter. You gotta hit the bodies, dude. You gotta hit the bot, all of them. Get the bodies, get the bodies, get the bodies. And there is a nest built right there on that shutter. Nate's gonna get stung taking them off. There's a good sized nest in there. You see that dude flying in? You see that guy flying in? It's on the inside. Look, there's a guy right here. He's flying into his house. He's going in. You gonna take him out? There's so many. They're still moving around in the top. They're, they're coming out. They're gonna be coming out. Yeah, dude, look how many you got. There's a ton of them. All of those would have came out at you as soon as you freaking open it. I saw two fly that way. There he is, there he is, there he is. Where? Right there. Get him. I'll get him. He stops. Got him! You got him out of the air. Yeah. Uh, he gone. All right, he's, oh, there's another one! <laughs> you got him. Oh, shoot. Oh my God, how many did you kill? A lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's like 10 of them on the ground down here. Dude, one of them would have got you for sure if you would have taken that off without him. Yeah. We should have conserved more. All right, get off the first panel. I'm going to see if I can kill any. Oh, dude, that was a huge nest. Oh, my gosh. And that wasn't even the one. That's not even the one I could see. That is one. Get in the pool. Get in the pool. That's a huge nest. You doing the Winnie the Pooh? They must have loved living in there. Nothing on that one. There's definitely one on the second or the third, but you might have already killed some. You want to go from that angle? There's way more in there. There's more more wasps. See, are they all the way up? <laughs> Shoot, dude, that was right on your head. You see him? Where? He flew over here. He's in the tree. Not like three or four of them just flew away. <laughs> you got the one, dude. We'll run at this. Cut your foot open on that. <laughs> so these shutters probably haven't been down in a couple of seasons. We've just left them up there, and it had one big nest, a little nest next to it, three nests. I think that's an old nest. Four nests. Five, six, seven nests. Crazy. One, four, 17. This was the wasp massacre of 2017. Seven nests and 21 wasps. They're all began to seek their feet out. What? They believe that they could possess it. I'm gonna replace the front passenger CV axle. We all got our work shoes on. Keep spinning it. Show us your off. work shoes. You taking that tire off? Got it. Good job. Got it. It's in there. Dump it. All right. We got one more. The axle came off the hub really easy this time, but it's not wanting to separate from, I think it's called the transaxle. So I'm going to slip a rope 
around it and try to pull on it. This is what I'm having trouble separating is this from right there. Just a couple taps with the hammer while Nate was pulling with the rope and it yanked right out. Now I gotta get this. This just looks like a uh, covering, like a protectant that I gotta get off and then put it on the new one because it doesn't have one on it. So this spline and this little retaining, this little clip right here is what holds the CV axle on. It goes into this new one here and then there's a uh, there's like a little cup in there where the the clip opens up and it just locks it right in there. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Yeah, I'm good. What happened? Mm. Cramp? No. Are you bleeding? Yeah. Well, the force should transfer. Yeah. From what I understand, is the clip closes. Put everything back on. Torque the axle nut to 198 foot pound. How? Gotta make them tight. Other way. Keep going until it stops. Most millennials don't even know how to change a flat tire. Does the shake go away? Still pulling to the right a little bit, but the shake uh -huh. is gone. The shake is 100%. Thank you. Better, gone. Nothing is finally shaking. It was the problem. Passenger side CV axle was the problem. Missed it. Is it feeding time? Oh, they already ate? Yep. These babies, these freeloading babies just ate? Yeah. You freeloading baby. Say yes. I heard that you're a freeloader, and you're an even bigger freeloader. Yeah. So props to whoever told me that I should have just replaced both CV axles while I was doing the timing belt. It did help, it did help a lot. I'm actually really stoked on the way that it's driving right now. It was driving really poorly, uh, but now it's a lot better. So thanks everyone for watching. If you haven't already, give the video a thumbs up. If you have any encouraging comments, I would love to hear them. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you have any encouraging comments, we'd love to hear them. And Martin and Kat and baby Christian are coming down tomorrow. We're going to change the spark plugs on their Nissan Sentra. It's supposed to be pretty complicated. I was looking at a YouTube video. You have to get into it kind of like I had to do on my van to get to the back, the back three. But we'll do that tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys in the morning. Bye. Oh.